Recently, a paper published in Physical Review Letters suggested that dark matter might be older than our universe. This development seems to shift the long-standing debates about seeing before the Big Bang, which have remained speculative despite James Webb's observations, to a new level. We quote directly from the abstract of the paper that inspired our video. Our result indicates that the lifetime of dark matter is approximately 10 superscript 2 seconds, which is significantly longer than the age of the universe. If we take this statement alone, it might appear that the case is closed, but is that really true? Understanding the answer to this question correctly requires fully grasping what dark matter actually is. Dark matter is a form of matter whose gravitational effects we can perceive, but we cannot directly observe it with our current technology. It distorts space-time so dramatically that it alters the path of light and causes stars to reach incredible velocities. It reveals nothing of itself. Because it does not interact with light through reflection, we cannot prove its physical existence through direct means, only indirectly. But we know it's there. Imagine this. We perceive only the matter-based universe. Perhaps there are other forms of consciousness perceiving a dark matter universe, and they may not perceive us either. Turning back to the paper that inspired this video, a group of researchers from the University of Tokyo in Osaka conducted a special observation to search for direct traces of dark matter. To do this, they used a high-resolution near-infrared spectrometer called Weinert, construction of which began in 2006 and took eight years to complete. A spectrometer analyzes incoming light by separating it into wavelengths, like a fingerprint scanner for light. It doesn't just measure the amount of light, but how much light arrives at which wavelengths, with a precision on the order of billionths of a meter. Weinert has truly impressive sensitivity. It can measure hydrogen emission lines with a precision of one part in 30,000. This is equivalent to detecting the heartbeat of a person on the moon from Earth. Weinert was mounted on the 6.5-meter Magellan Clay Telescope at Las Campanas Observatory in Chile. The researchers observed two dwarf galaxies, Leo V, located 178,000 light-years away, and Tucana II, at 57,000 light-years. These galaxies were specifically chosen because they are ultra-faint dwarf spheroidal galaxies known to contain an extraordinary amount of dark matter compared to their visible stars. They are among the most promising regions in the universe where dark matter is most densely concentrated. If dark matter exists, it should be most clearly observed here. How do we know that these galaxies contain dark matter when we're not even sure it exists? The stars in these galaxies move much faster than can be explained by their visible mass. To account for such high velocities, there must be an unseen gravitational source, and that fits the definition of dark matter. In fact, some DSBH galaxy measurements show that up to 99% of their mass is dark matter. In essence, in these galaxies, dark matter outweighs normal matter by nearly a thousand times. Think about it. The dark matter density in Leo V is 10 million times greater than the average matter density of our solar system. That's equivalent to having 10 tons of invisible mass in the volume of a teaspoon. So how did researchers try to detect this dark matter? The aim was to see if dark matter particles decay over time, leaving behind detectable traces. Decay means the breakdown of a particle into smaller, more stable parts. For example, a neutron, when free, decays into a proton, an electron, and an antineutrino within about 15 minutes. The neutron dies, but its components live on. Similarly, if axion-like dark matter particles decay, they should leave behind measurable signals, like photons. That's why researchers used such a sensitive spectrometer to detect any such photons. If dark matter decays, the resulting photons should leave detectable traces in the spectrum. It's like walking into a burned-down house. You didn't see the fire, but you smell smoke and see black soot on the walls. You analyze the soot and detect gasoline molecules. Now you have strong evidence that the fire was intentional. Searching for dark matter decay through spectral analysis works the same way. Even if we can't see dark matter, we can analyze its decay products, like light, to infer its behavior in the past. Theoretically, some dark matter candidates especially axion-like particles, can decay into two photons. Researchers focus on these particles because they are strong theoretical candidates and may produce clear, measurable signals when they decay. 
These photons would appear in the spectrum as a sharp, narrow spectral line. And if you have a sensitive enough spectrometer, that line cannot escape your eye or that of the AI analyzing the data. If such particles exist, their photon traces would be silent, but solid evidence of a past cosmic event, like the smoke in a burnt house. And if we detect this signal, we can estimate how long these particles take to decay. The researchers did not detect the expected signal. Had they done so, they would have been the first people to directly observe dark matter, but they didn't. Still, this is significant, because it leaves one possibility. If dark matter exists, it either does not decay at all, or decays so rarely, with such a long lifetime, that we wouldn't detect it in such a short observation. Thus, researchers established a very tight lower bound on the lifetime of axion-like dark matter particles. It must be at least 10 superscript 2 seconds. The scientifically accepted age of the universe is about 4.3, 10 superscript 1 seconds. This means the estimated lifetime of these particles is millions of times longer than the age of the universe. How do we relate particle lifetime to its age? We may not know when dark matter formed. But if we know how much of it still exists today and how much should have decayed in a given time, we can statistically calculate its average lifetime. But how can we estimate the lifetime of something we've never seen? Think of it like this. You place a box of balloons in your house and monitor it with a camera for 24 hours. No balloon pops. Then you repeat this test 1,000 times, each for 24 hours, and still no balloon pops. You conclude that the minimum time before a balloon pops must be at least 24 hours. That's what researchers did. They considered distance, light intensity, observation time, and spectrometer sensitivity. From this, they derived the lower bound of 10 superscript 2 seconds, not from seeing something, but from seeing nothing. And in science, seeing nothing consistently can be a powerful observation. They say, if we've seen no trace under these conditions, the particle's lifetime must be so long that decay is too rare to observe. Did they directly measure the particle's age? No, but the complete absence of decay traces strongly supports the idea that these particles either never decay or do so so rarely that they have lifespans longer than the universe. This data seriously introduces the possibility that dark matter might be older than the universe. This discovery also supports cyclic universe models and string theory-inspired cosmologies. Cyclic models propose that the universe has no beginning or end, only endless cycles of expansion and collapse. According to this view, dark matter could be a remnant from a previous universe, existing independently of time's flow. And if dark matter particles really do have lifetimes vastly greater than the universe's age, this model gains credibility. In short, the greatest mystery of the cosmos, dark matter, may predate the birth of the universe itself. And we may get closer to confirming that in the near future, the future circular collider at CERN, planned to begin operation in 2027, will reach energies up to 100 TeV and may directly produce decay signals from dark matter. If so, we'll finally be able to test the discoveries described in this video. If you'd like this kind of content to reach more people, please subscribe to our channel and support us by liking and sharing this video. See you in the next one.